Okay, let's get started. Um, today, I will talk about uh, a deep neural network for acoustic modeling. So since it says acoustic modeling, so we are still here, uh, acoustic modeling part. By the way, I intentionally include a feature extract a little bit. I will explain that part uh, later. So first, uh, let's review uh, acoustic models. Uh, we have an uh, observation. Uh, this is the, uh, the log metal filter bank, uh, D-dimensional log metal filter bank features, uh, or some other speech features. And the target is uh, to uh, the predict the word sequence, right? But to do that, uh, the, what we usually use is uh, introducing the phoneme, and then uh, the, uh, the try to kind of uh, use the intermediate representation based on phoneme to make it easier. And then we actually uh, separate the problem to the acoustic model lexicon and the language model. And then acoustic model is actually not uh, still in the uh, final form. We actually uh, introduced the HMM state sequence, which is the same length as the uh, input speech features. And then this information is actually uh, the, the having a form of the hard alignment. And then uh, the, by using this kind of our, uh, the representation, uh, we can uh, the solve this problem uh, by using a various algorithm that the, uh, I introduced before. Okay, so anyway, uh, now our problem is to try to tackle the sequence, uh, two sequence problem of the observation uh, and the state sequence and so on. I will just using the joint distribution form, but as you can see that easily, we can also uh, convert it to the, uh, the posterior uh, distribution or likelihood problem, which is input is the other observation features, and then output is a label. Uh, the, the, uh, the, and we still use an HMM. Okay, uh, let's uh, the, uh, the further review uh, what we have done given this other the, uh, distribution. What we will do is uh, we use uh, actually lots of conditional independence assumption to finally factorize this joint distribution as a, uh, the emit, emission distribution and the state transition uh, probability. And previously, we actually uh, substituting this emission probability with a Gaussian mixture likelihood function, right? And what we will move from the deep uh, the Gaussian mixture model to the deep neural network is that we replacing this part to the deep neural network, okay? And uh, right now, uh, the, uh, from now on, uh, we don't uh, care so much about whether this is you know, solved by EM algorithm and so on. We don't care because everything can be done by back propagation. So this method is called the deep neural network. HMM hybrid method. Almost all entire formulations are completely the same, except that this likelihood is estimated by the deep neural network. By the way, other how to other compute this likelihood? One possibility is we may use the regression problem. However, this is very difficult. So instead, we actually converting this as a multi class classification program by using the uh, product uh, the rule. Well, uh, we could say that base theory. So from here to here, we can actually converting it by using the base theorem or product uh, the, the rule. And we actually are uh, uh, the ignoring P O, uh, the dis distribution of P of O because it is not related to our problem. And then uh, focusing on this one, and then always uh, the, the try to uh, the solve uh, this problem uh, by using deep neural network here, but this P of ST 
is still estimated by the maximum likelihood. And all other formulation, like you know, other making this one uh, the, from the complete data likelihood and so on, we all still using the HMM based approaches. This is a deep neural network uh, HMM uh, hybrid method. So some people actually just directly call it hybrid and so on. So people may uh, confuse the name hybrid, but the many contexts people just call this approach as a hybrid uh, approach. Okay, so uh, we introduced many algorithms, right? Uh, the forward algorithm, backward algorithm, forward backward algorithm, beta B algorithm, and then uh, these are kind of are connected uh, based on the EM algorithm. And then we're using a Baumwelt algorithm to estimate the parameters and so on. So we actually will replace uh, most of the path with this operation. However, a uh, training part, EM algorithm part, we don't need it anymore because this one is done by the bus propagation. However, purely if we try to get the likelihood, we're still using the forward algorithm. And then uh, replacing the emission probability from here to here. And the same for the beta B algorithm. Uh, we're still using the beta B algorithm and then getting the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the uh, most possible state sequence. Uh, algorithm structure is completely the same, but the emission probability likelihood is replaced from the Gaussian mixture to this uh, deep neural network uh, and so on. So this is a kind of a trick of the DNN HMM hybrid. I will move to the more about the exact deep neural network architecture, but by other, uh, until this point, uh, is there some question? Okay, cool. Okay, now I move to the uh, deep neural network. The problem is how to providing this distribution uh, by using the deep neural network. And then originally uh, people are using the field forward neural network. I will explain the, some advanced uh, the architecture like a recurrent neural network and so on. But let me first start from the, uh, the field forward neural network. It's actually defined the input speech features and the output HMM state. And then uh, the field forward neural network is having a number of layers and having a number of uh, hidden states. Uh, and then we have a type of uh, nonlinear uh, activation uh, and so on. And I will explain each of the component. But basically this is the kind of configuration uh, we need to add, add, uh, set for the feed forward neural network uh, the architecture. So this is already many. Uh, because uh, the compared with Gaussian mixture or HMM, uh, which we basically just uh, the specifying the number of states and the number of uh, the mixture components, but it becomes quite a large configuration. Okay, let's talk about input feature because uh, this is the uh, most different part from the Gaussian mixture model. So GMM HMM formulation actually has a lot of constraints. Uh, to make it uh, the tractable, we actually set a lot of conditional independence assumptions, right? Uh, sometimes in the output, which goes to the HMM to be the, uh, which goes to the other, uh, the sequence problem to the hidden Markov model uh, with some uh, the, the uh, Markov assumptions and so on. And then input feature, we also actually having a lot of conditional in independence assumption to eliminate the conditions. And then the, the one way to recover uh, this, uh, the, the college, uh, this kind of condition is instead of considering to using the observation, how about we can concatenate all the features? And then we could actually consider a lot of speech features in the input 
That is at least uh, the relaxing our conditional independence assumption, which we also always try to eliminate the other features, other uh, the, uh, the, the uh, dependencies. And why we cannot use that in the deep neuron, uh, the Gaussian mixture model? Uh, this is because Gaussian mixture model is based on the diagonal covariance. Diagonal covariance means that which is good to model the feature that does not have a correlation, right? However, speech features are very correlated. You see that the, uh, the, some of my figures, uh, MHCC figure, you, it usually has some kind of quite strong dependency. It's not like a random across the time. So actually, if we just concatenate the speech features and then making it as a new feature, Gaussian mixture doesn't work because this feature has a very strong correlation and it is not well uh, the, the modeled by the, uh, the diagonal covariance. So to deal with that, uh, the, during our lecture, for example, I introduced a delta feature, which is one way to relax this condition. The other I skip, but the linear discriminant analysis, same type of covariance. There are a lot of techniques to uh, remove the correlation of the speech features, but still using a lot of feature, concatenated features. Deep neural network, we don't need it. We don't have to care about the correlation because correlation is cared in the linear matrix anyway. So we can actually concatenate other speech features. By the way, we can also concatenate many of them. Again, the other uh, the problem I mentioned is that the Gaussian mixture is uh, the, the expecting the features to be continuous vector, right? It is not impossible, but it is not best to model, for example, binary feature, discrete feature, or some other features that is bounded with the Gaussian mixture model. However, deep neural network doesn't assume such kind of input domain. So basically we can throw anything. So actually in the most effective way is just concatenating the neighboring feature. That is turned out to be very powerful and improve the performance. So I kind of use the L and the R uh, the, or oh, sorry, the, in this case, it's the same uh, the, 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 the window. So I use the R, but it can be symmetric. Sometimes, you know, uh, the left contest can be longer and the right contest can be smaller uh, and so on. So this is actually quite significant change uh, from the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Gaussian mixture model cases. By the way, another comment is that um, MSCC is carefully designed to be fit to the Gaussian model. And the final uh, discrete cosine transformation is actually exactly this process. But in, when we move to deep neural network, we actually don't need final discrete cosine uh, the, the, the transformation. So instead of using MSCC, people are using log metal filter, filter uh, the, uh, which is uh, the, without uh, the taking the, uh, uh, the DCT uh, in the last process. Okay, this is uh, uh, the, the flexibility of the input. Sounds like we have a lot of uh, the potentials of improved performance, right? The next one uh, is uh, the, the output. What kind of output category uh, we will use for the state? And then uh, we just using the, uh, uh, the context uh, dependent HMM state. It's uh, usually after the clustering, uh, like uh, the I introduced in the phonetic condition tree. Uh, but anyway, after that, we would have uh, 2,000 or 3,000 uh, the, the HMM state in total. And that becomes the category. Okay. Input can be extended to uh, deal with the, uh, the, any of the features. And the output, uh, we're still using the HMM state ID. 
By the way, there is often uh, have a lot of questions about it. Do we really care about the, for example, uh, the HMM state uh, structure? Because HMM state structure is, for example, initially it uh, the, the uh, uh, comes from the uh, dependency from the phoneme. And then we also kind of extend it to deal with the temporal information, which is, you know, left to right cases, uh, the, the phoneme is split to three states and so on. And then we also have a further uh, the context information, right? So it actually has a structure. So instead of using the uh, the uh, the HMM state, uh, the, 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 the context dependent HMM state, can we use a structure? Yes, we can, but it makes it difficult, complicated. So people just making this, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, this has a classification part to be simple. And then we just using the given input to predict uh, the one of the 3000 HMM states. That is a kind of a problem uh, we usually define. Okay, now I uh, define the input and the output and what's the middle. And the fever for the neural network is usually using the affine transformation and the nonlinear activation function. And this can be uh, used in the lecture, I use a sigma as a, as a sigmoid function. And this way, we can first convert input feature which can be logarithmic filter bank and con concatenated to now becomes a very long uh, the, the feature, long dimensional feature, which is converted in a linear form and then taking the sigmoid to, how to say, change the domain. This becomes the hidden state. And this process is continued uh, several times. And then uh, the, the after uh, we uh, the make this conversion several times, we finally take soft mat. And then converting this uh, feature to the uh, probability. Um, I will explain a bit more detail about the uh, linear sigmoid and soft max and so on. But anyway, I just want to uh, make sure that we can easily make this kind of, uh, how to say, iterative process to uh, the, the convert uh, the speech features in each layer, and then finally converting it to the probability, okay? Let's talk about each operation. First one is linear. This is uh, the converting the, uh, conve uh, the, the one vector to the another vector with a different dimension, right? And then uh, the having a bias vector uh, in general. So this is a very simple uh, the, uh, the, uh, transformation, just uh, the linear. And then the, the, uh, the model parameters would be this uh, matrix and the bias star. The next one is sigmoid function. So sigmoid function is using this form, uh, the one divided by one plus e to the minus x, okay, e to the power of minus x. And this uh, actually uh, the process any of the, uh, the infinite, uh, the, the unbounded continuous vector to zero to one. So it's actually uh, the bounding this information to the zero to one information. And the, uh, in my course, and actually many of other uh, the, the courses, uh, we actually using the element-wise sigmoid function. So, if we take, for example, sigma and the vector, uh, which means that we also have a uh, exponential um, minus x. This is also vector form, and this is actually uh, the uh, rewrite as uh, this kind of uh, the ways. If you know someone is very strict about the math, you guys may think that you know no no exponential must take scalar value, right? 
Uh, this one is a kind of a conventional ways to uh, make the, uh, the uh, accept the element wise form. So please uh, the, the make sure uh, that uh, the usually sigma exponential, if we take the, uh, the vector value, which means that it is operated for each of the dimension. Okay. And this uh, the, the, is just a function without any parameters. So uh, the, there is no trainable parameter compared with the linear matrix. And then the uh, derivative uh, is uh, this kind of form. Not sure how many people can, by the way, uh, derive it <laughs> by yourself. <laughs> I might make it as a homework <laughs> uh, Wednesday. So my friend actually told me that uh, the when he would interview a student for internship, uh, he will ask about the, uh, the derivative chain rule, which I will explain it later. And then the, if the student can answer the uh, chain rule, he will ask about the derivative of this sigmoid function. Uh, because sigmoid function, if we take the derivative, we actually have to know the chain rule to uh, the derive it. So if you can master uh, this uh, derivative, uh, at least you can get my friend interview uh, process. <laughs> so <laughs> let's try to uh, the, the, uh, the remember it. And the last one, last component that I didn't explain is a softmax, which is by the way, very similar to the sigmoid. Or I would say that this is a kind of generalized version of the sigmoid function. Sigma function is mapping our problem to zero to one. So this is actually quite nice property, which means that we can convert this problem to the probability since this is zero to one, right? And then if, for example, we have a, a, the, the, uh, some value converted to the, uh, the sum of the point to zero to one, which can become the probability uh, of that kind of a value. And the rest of the, uh, the uh, value can become the rest of the probability of the additional value. And then this is a, a quite other, other often used for the binary classification problem for the sigmoid. And then softmax is actually uh, the, the just uh, the extending it from two to two classes to n classes. So that the actually equation form is quite similar. And similar to the, uh, the softmax function, a uh, sigmoid function, there is no learnable parameter. And then this actually satisfies some to one condition. This is very important. Any of the value, values after the sigmoid, it goes to uh, the, uh, the, uh, satisfy the some to one condition. So again, this is a very good function for us to interpret our values to the uh, the, the probability function. So this uh, the softmax function is often used as a last layer of our classification problem. Okay. And similar to the previous uh, two functions, this also has a derivative. Okay. Now I have a, a kind of our discussions. Uh, which functions or operations we can use and we cannot use uh, the, for a neural network. So uh, the, I kind of listing uh, log exponential uh, multiplication and so on. But can you say there, there are any other, quest, other, other functions or operations that you can take the derivative? Yes, addition, subtraction, division. Uh, we can also, for example, take sine, cosine, and tangent. Uh, many of the actually functions, uh, we can get the derivative. What kind of function we cannot take a derivative? I say there are not so many functions, uh, but the one important function we cannot take a derivative, which is argmax. This is our basic function. <laughs> Actually, we cannot take the derivative. 
So uh, it is not easy to actually add, add, uh, add, uh, optimize the entire speech recognition process uh, based on the uh, back propagation because we cannot get the derivative of the argument. Although we have a lot of ways to approximate it or kind of consider the similar function to the argument to uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, sort of this kind of uh, operation. Okay, so uh, the last part, uh, after uh, we set the input middle of the layer output, and then last part is to set the objective function. And for this other uh, simple, uh, the, uh, the neural network, uh, the, the multi class classification cases, we usually uh, use the, uh, the cross entropy. And the cross entropy is defined as the uh, distribution of the reference and the predicted uh, deep neural network, uh, the, the uh, distribution, uh, and so on. So it looks like very complicated, right? What is the uh, distribution of the reference? Uh, this one is output of the softmax. But in our cases, it becomes easier. For example, if we use the beta alignment, we can get the, uh, the HM state index, right, for each frame, right? We regard this as a target. So this one is a one hole, just one in some element, and all the others are zero. Okay. So this one is actually also written as a Kronecker delta. So one of the summation is actually gone. And then it becomes this kind of a simple form. Many people actually starting this one as a cross entropy, but actually at a, behind the cross entropy, uh, we often assume that, uh, the, uh, that we care about the difference uh, the, to be uh, the, the deterministic or probabilistic or not. So by the way, as I mentioned, it means that we need a beta variant. So to make this other uh, training working, uh, we need some model first, and then making a beta variation, and then making a target, and then we train this model. And the which model we use, we still use the uh, Gaussian mixture model. So actually, uh, this kind of process is uh, the quite hard to say connected with our kind of previous methodology. First, we uh, the build the Gaussian mixture model and then get the state, uh, the, the information, and then uh, the regarding it as a target in the beta algorithm, and then making this part to be simplified, a uh, multi-class problem. Okay. Of course, we can make it a bit more complicated. For example, instead of using beta, maybe we can use the forward backward algorithm, and then make this part to be soft alignment, and then using it as a target and so on. But practically, uh, this way is actually quite reasonable uh, if we're using the very good model to get the beta variation. So many people are actually using this way to train this neural network. Is that everything? Uh, we actually have a lot of other variations. Like we could also use the square error uh, if we find some ground truth, uh, the, the state sequence and so on. Uh, we could also use a binary cross entropy by combining the uh, each of the multi class problem as the code and representing it as a binary class and so on. Uh, but many people actually using the other uh, uh, softmax and the cross entropy uh, based uh, approaches. Okay, uh, now we actually have a building block. So linear transformation I explained, sigmoid activation I explained. Softmax activation I explained, input and output and so on. And then we can actually add a repeating or inserting uh, this kind of a function, activation function or transformation, and then forming the neural network. So it's actually quite flexible, I would say. But it's uh, uh, flexible, but this means that we also need to consider a lot of configuration. Uh, for example, the yeah, maybe I can try to uh, light. 
Um, this is not easy. One possibility is doing this way, right? But probably this would not be working well because it has a nonlinear activation function twice. Uh, and also it may be not easy to adjust the, the uh, dimension. So we usually have a uh, linear transformation here, right? And the, uh, we can even, you know, uh, repeating this part uh, many times. Oh, sorry. That is what we usually do. So it's more like a, a design of the graph. Uh, the, that is a kind of a, uh, the neural networks, uh, the power uh, configurations, but also making this uh, to be very complicated. Okay. And the last question is how to optimize. We can just we can just use the gradient descent. Now we don't care so much about the uh, whether it is solvable or not. Uh, you guys had a lot of care for how to solve the EM algorithm uh, for Gaussian mixture model and so on. But basically, we don't have to care. We just take a derivative and then uh, the subtract or uh, the, the add, depending on the uh, our uh, the, the design where the objective is loss or score. But by uh, doing that, uh, we can optimize uh, our parameters. This is by the also uh, the iterative algorithm. And how to take this derivative? Uh, this is actually done by uh, the chain rule if all the kind of functions are, are, they, are they differentiable. So we could kind of are uh, using a lot of kind of functions we combined. And it's don't worry if uh, the, each component is differentiable, even we combine it is uh, the, uh, the entire uh, the network is differentiable. So we can actually get the derivative. So this is actually uh, the, the neural networks, uh, the deep neural network uh, based approaches. We can combine various functions and then we can get the derivative and then we can update the parameters and so on. And the people are actually using uh, uh, the several uh, tricks. Uh, one of the trick is mini batch processing. First, there are two uh, the extreme ways to uh, the update the parameter. One is batch processing, which uh, the consider entire derivative of the all the data. All the batch of the entire data we use. And then uh, we actually updating the parameters and so on. This is actually we use for the EM algorithm, right? We take the, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, sufficient statistics for all the kind of data. And then uh, we updated it. And we continue this uh, the several times. These are the very effective uh, in terms of the, uh, the making the uh, algorithm to be parallelized. But it is known to be very slow in terms of the convergence. And the other uh, very extreme case of this uh, the, 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 uh, a gradient descent is uh, online processing. We just use one data and then get the derivative and the change the parameter and move to the next data and so on. These tend to be very fast. However, this is a quite typical incremental process, right? Process the data, update the model, process the data. So we cannot actually parallelize this part. So how to uh, the, the mitigate this problem? People are using something between. Uh, people first uh, the split the entire data to some of the chunk of the data. People call this uh, the, uh, the data as a mini batch uh, compared with the original big batch. And then during this mini batch process, 
we use the uh, uh, the uh, the parallelization to make the uh, computation uh, to be faster. And then since uh, the still this is uh, the the uh, the the, the, uh, the uh, split process uh, compared with the uh, the, the comp uh, entire batch process. So we could also have some kind of a sufficiently fast convergence. So uh, this uh, process uh, is uh, called the mini batch processing. And then always there is a question, you know, how to set a mini batch? Unfortunately, this is uh, one of the configuration. <laughs> So you guys actually have to find the, the best mini batch processing. However, this is not only for the, uh, the fast convergence, uh, the, uh, the, the parallelization, uh, and so on. It's also related to the GPU memory and whether we can get the sufficient statistics uh, if uh, we using the, uh, the, some of the normalization like batch norm and so on. So this set of the mini batch size is actually very, very difficult uh, hyperparameter. It can be changed depending on your GPU card or my GPU card because GPU memory is different. Eh? It depends on the, uh, the model size, uh, whether you, 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 we use the, the uh, five layer or 10 layer. And the, depending on this kind of convergence, uh, the polarization uh, and so on. So uh, the tuning the, uh, this other uh, the mini batch size is uh, the, one of the most important engineering uh, we have to do. Okay, so this is uh, mostly for the, uh, the deep neural network acoustic model uh, based on the, uh, the feed forward layer. And I just have a one slide about advanced topic. As I mentioned, I didn't care so much about the label dependency at all. We're still using the HMM. Uh, we don't actually care about the, uh, the we in, in terms of the input, we care about the context. But in terms of the output, we actually don't care about uh, anything at all. And then just using the cross entropy, uh, which is actually not entirely correct uh, based on what we are doing, since uh, we try to solve the sequence. So there is a, actually extension of a frame level discriminative training, which is I explained as a cross entropy, can be actually uh, the extended by using a sequence discriminative training using the maximum mutual information and so on. This is a little bit advanced topic. So I just uh, remarked that we have this kind of area and the, I uh, showed uh, the two papers about it. Okay, so uh, the, now I will move to the advanced neural network acoustic models. But do, do you have some questions so far? Okay, sounds good. So now I try to kind of uh, explain variants uh, of the neural network uh, from the feed forward neural network. And one other example is convolutional neural network. And the convolutional neural network actually had more configurations, I would say, uh, than uh, the feed for the neural network. So I will quickly explain uh, this kind of a configuration, but basically one conf uh, the convolutional neural network have this kind of a five argument. So this is very, very complicated, uh, I would say. So uh, let's uh, first uh, the discuss about our kind of speech feature, which is this one is a time axis, and this one is uh, uh, the, the, uh, the log mail filter bank uh, dimension and so on. And the, yeah, there are some discussions, I know, but the, some people may say that this looks like an image, right? So why not we try to use the image uh, processing technique? And the convolutional neural network is powerful for the, uh, the, the image processing, but the data actually applied to the speech uh, processing and so on. So for the kind of uh, the, uh, simplicity, I will uh, start to uh, discuss uh, about the simple 1D convolution, and then we'll extend to the, the, what we will usually do for our new, uh, the, the convolutional neural network. First, let's say we have uh, only five 
point of the data. And this is a scalar, one dimensional, five point of the data, five lengths of the data. And then uh, let's ch change the configuration. First configuration, most important one is filter size. So this actually uh, consider the uh, neighboring frame as an input and then converting to some new feature. Uh, in this case, it, uh, filter size two means that we consider the other the uh, two features and uh, three can be more uh, depending on the, our kind of problem and so on. Okay, let's start uh, the process this kind of convolution operation. It turns out that the output is four. It's actually uh, the, the less than the original length. It is okay. Uh, some people using this reduced one, but it is easy, uh, easy to debug uh, if we use the same length, right? So people actually using the padding option for this kind of a problem. So this part configuration is to compensate the, the conversion operation. Often used for compensate the, 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 uh, the conversion operation. It can be used for the other, other cases as well. But the anyway, padding is used for mainly for this other uh, compensation of the lengths. And after the other uh, pad, padding, we get the same uh, lengths of the feature, which is very cool. Uh, but in some cases, we see that this one is a little bit redundant, right? For example, we consider the same feature twice here, 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 right? This sounds like a redundant. And then there's another operation called the slider. So by doing this slider, we could actually add a skip the operation. And then we can actually make the, uh, reduce the redundancy uh, comes from the convolutional operation uh, and so on. And this uh, operation slider is actually quite famous uh, for speech processing as well. Because for example, Previously, we have a five lengths of the feature. After the padding, it becomes six. But if we're using the slide two, we can actually make it as a three feature. We can reduce the length, right? If we're using the slide larger, we can further reduce the, uh, the speech feature, right? Although then that, you know, it's, if we're skipping larger and then we also lose the information. So this is actually the, uh, the important balance, uh, how we skip it. This uh, uh, approach is called downsampling uh, in speech processing. So remember that speech feature is generally 10 milliseconds uh, or eight milliseconds, uh, depending on our feature extraction, but let's say 10 milliseconds. And the phoneme word is actually quite longer than this original speech feature. 50 to 100 milliseconds. So to adjust the length, people are actually using the downsampling technique. And there are a lot of ways to, by the way, uh, downsample this method. Like for example, uh, the, here I also are the, uh, showing the uh, example of the reshaping uh, based downsampling. Uh, we could also uh, use the uh, cellular tension, which I will explain later, as a downsampling component. Uh, uh, the, the, any other thing? Yeah, we use the, the, uh, the uh, uh, recurrent neural network and the skipping the output. That is also one way to the downsample the method. But the most frequently used downsampling is this stride operation. So people using this stride operation, uh, the putting the CNN and the striding operation, and then uh, making the input and the output length to be similar. Uh, that is uh, the, the, that we usually use uh, the, for uh, the CNN in speech recognition, acoustic modeling. And then that I will explain a bit more about our problem since you know uh, the, the dogmatic filter bank is two dimensional, right? And then that uh, basically any of the operation like a filter size, slide, and so on becomes a two dimensional uh, the information. And then, you know, in these cases, uh, that, uh, I use a two, two by two, and then it is processed to entire image uh, and so on. And we need a padding, and then we also have a padding for each dimension. So 
all of the kind of our, uh, the, the stride padding operation to be actually extended to the two dimension. And the last one, last two one I didn't explain is that these two one number of input channels, uh, which can be actually more than one. Uh, the, I will explain the example, but in the image, uh, people are using the color information. Uh, and then later, uh, the, the, after this kind of input augmentation, uh, we also output several channels. Uh, this, is, this channel does not mean like a microphone channel and so on, just in the CNN uh, the, the, the terminology, which is just preparing different filter. So that we can actually have a multiple output. Uh, the, but uh, basically, just that's it. We independently uh, the process uh, this kind of uh, the operation and then get the multiple uh, the output uh, depending on the, uh, the size of M. So this uh, is the, uh, the configuration uh, the padding, sliding, uh, filter size number of output channel, that is actually configuration. Input can be depending on the, our input. So it can be actually not the configuration in many cases. And then it is not the end. <laughs> actually, the, we also have our pooling operation, which for example, are using the maximum or mini, mean or whatever to uh, uh, the, get the nonlinear uh, the information uh, uh, for the, uh, the, the, this kind of a combination map. And the pooling operation usually also have the same uh, the configuration as the filter size slide uh, part and so on. So uh, this is a kind of a, uh, the uh, convolution neural network. And then again, this is used for the acoustic model. Instead of the feed forward or in addition to the feed forward. Remember that this other uh, uh, convolution operation is all actually differentiable because this is just a linear uh, the, the convolutional operation. So we can actually get the derivative uh, and so on. And actually one of the success of the neural network based approach for speech recognition, as I mentioned, is uh, the, the uh, CNN, uh, the 1D uh, the convolutional uh, neural network. Uh, uh, developed by the uh, Professor Alex Weibel here. So input channel, as I mentioned that the speech cases, it's mostly one, but some people using the, uh, the delta and the delta delta as a different image. <laughs> yeah, interesting, <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the idea. But uh, it's, the, my experience, it doesn't uh, the change so much performance, but anyway, uh, this is a way to augment the input uh, data. Uh, and so on. And uh, I didn't explain about the other techniques, but the, there are a lot of other advanced techniques like uh, batch normalization, uh, residual connections, uh, the, and so on, which makes the kind of uh, the completion uh, operation quite complicated uh, in terms of the, uh, the, the configurations and so on. So, uh, the, since the, the configuration of the convolution is very, very uh, large, I usually don't recommend the students to tune the, uh, the architecture of the convolution because again, it is too many. So instead, I recommend you to, for example, borrow the architecture from the other area, like a computer vision and so on first. Of course, later you can modify it. Or if you have a very good idea, you can actually uh, the, propose the new uh, CNN architecture and so on. But my suggestion is uh, the borrowing the, uh, the architecture uh, from the, uh, the computer vision and so on, it's safe. Actually, this is based on my experience. I actually also try to use a CNN and then uh, the, uh, the, uh, the tune a lot of configuration but I couldn't find the best kind of a configuration. And then I just copied a BGG, uh, the famous uh, the computer vision uh, network to the front end of the acoustic model. And it's very working well. <laughs> I was very actually surprised. So this uh, the BGG based uh, the, the CNN for the uh, input layer 
is actually used for uh, many of the speech recognition now. And many people claim that, 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 that I am the first and so on. And I also want to claim that I am the first person <laughs> to use a BGG as a front end CNN process in the acoustic model. OK, so uh, this is actually one uh, the, the advanced acoustic model. And one important CNN uh, the, uh, the fe feature is that this uh, the filtering part, because this filtering actually considered uh, the, the neighboring frame, right? If we're using the larger filter, it uh, consumes more computation. But it actually can uh, consider the longer context, right? This is very similar to what I mentioned for the feed forward neural network. We just concatenating to get the longer context. And the uh, CNN can also uh, the, the consider the longer context based on this filter. And if this CNN is kind of uh, repeated again with a longer filter, actually higher layer considered a very long context. So this is actually one of the power uh, of the CNN uh, for speech recognition because context information is very important. And then the uh, rest, I will skip this one, uh, low audio processing. If I have time uh, in the uh, foreign lectures, I may revisit. Instead, I will move to the recurrent neural network. So recurrent neural network, for acoustic model is another way to consider the entire context. So previously, uh, the uh, feed forward network, I explained that we can concatenate feature. In CNN, I explained that we can using the filter. For the, uh, the uh, recurrent neural network cases, we could actually sweep, sweep uh, entire speech features uh, based on the recurrent neural network. So now the problem, uh, uh, the previously we consider this likelihood of posterior distribution. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, we could extend the neighboring frame, which is the, uh, the, the feed forward or CNN. But in the recurrent neural network, we consider all the feature, all the entire history and so on. And they, uh, uh, I will base uh, the starting from the base uh, recurrent neural network, which is called the, uh, the Elman type uh, recurrent neural network. The, this uh, the, uh, structure is almost the same for the feed forward. Input linear transformation sigmoid to get the speech uh, next uh, the, uh, hidden state each feature, right? Important difference is here. We also are putting the previously estimated feature, which we can actually consider the context. This is just a one other uh, a portion of the operation, like we can write that like it. But if we, for example, expand this one, like for example, this yt minus one, is also ex, uh, the, ex, uh, the ex, uh, represented by the uh, WYT minus two, XT minus one and so on, right? We could actually expand this part to the entire sequence. How it works? It's actually liking solving this kind of problem. So this is very cool. Actually, since we all are connected, so, we even have a path that very beginning of the speech features affect to the end of the, uh, the HMM state sequence. Not sure, maybe too much, uh, but at least as a model to have such kind of ability. Uh, this is very cool. And then how to train it? We're just using a softmax and then uh, applying to this one. And then uh, we can actually uh, make the acoustic model to be working as a recurrent neural network where we consider the entire history. That is very cool, right? But uh, no, 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 we cannot consider the feature. 
information. Uh, feed forward or uh, the CNN can consider future context by expanding to the right context. Recurrent neural network can also do it. We consider the bidirectional recurrent neural network, which is the opposite time direction. And then we just uh, the combine uh, this uh, the, uh, the two uh, the, uh, direction. Uh, the one is the uh, original time direction, the other is the opposite direction. And then we have uh, two features, right? And then we just concatenate. And then this one is actually considered entire sequence, even including the future. Uh, previous and only including the uh, entire past, which is still very cool, right? But by using the uh, bidirectional neural network, we can actually consider the entire uh, the future, uh, the prediction, uh, and so on. But the bidirectional uh, recurrent neural network was uh, proposed in Japan. Uh, the, actually, one of my friends, uh, uh, the, it's really my former colleague, uh, the, 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 uh, the staying in the same room. Uh, the uh, Mike Schuster, he actually proposed uh, bidirectional RNN. And one more, uh, the uh, time delayed neural network, TDNN, uh, the, was proposed by Alex Weibel, but that was also when he was in uh, Japan. So actually exactly the same place, ATR, which is now uh, the, the uh, stop the speech research, so people may not know, but uh, there was a very famous research institute called ATR. And where the important neural network type, one is, you know, the, the origin, one of the origin of the CNN, TDNN, and the bidirectional uh, recurrent neural network uh, born in the, uh, the place that I was actually working. But I was not exactly working this institute. I was actually working next to this <laughs> institute, by the way. And then my colleague actually moved to this uh, institute, which is entity laboratories, yeah. So I'm very proud of you know, explaining about CNN and uh, RNN because you know it came from uh, my friends uh, in Japan, when they are working at Japan. Okay, so uh, recurrent neural network is very cool. However, it actually has a problem of the long range dependency. Did I prepare some slide? Okay, no. Yeah, actually this one is very cool theoretically. It's actually considered the uh, entire sequence. However, this arrow always has some matrix operation every time. So to uh, get this kind of a probability, we get the matrix operation uh, five times or t times, uh, the, which actually making the value to be very small or very large. And then actually practically, this uh, the basic uh, the Elman type recurrent neural network is not working well for the very long sequence. So instead, uh, people using the long short term memory uh, recurrent neural network, RNN. And the, I will explain uh, this one a little bit uh, the carefully, since this is very cool, uh, the, 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 uh, the ideas uh, to uh, consider the long term uh, the information. So first, recurrent neural network compared with the other uh, new, uh, recurrent neural network, it has a uh, two values. One is a normal uh, recurrent state, which I explained before. And the other is memory cell. We actually have a distinction of the memory and the actual hidden state. And then uh, this is a, a recurrent uh, uh, LSTM based recurrent neural network group. I will explain the, uh, each component one by one. I will try to quickly <laughs> explain it. Yes. And I may revisit it the ne next time because it is other uh, important. Huh? So, uh, first, we carefully design the cell information. First, cell information can store 
some kind of a memory since it's called a memory, right? And uh, this memory information can be forgotten, will be forgotten. I use the word will be. It may contain or it may forget. And the other uh, information is if we have a new information, we consider whether uh, put this new information to be added to memory or not. Will be added or not. The next one, okay, now I have this kind of memory. It can be uh, forgotten from the previous one. It can be added from the uh, current information. And then the last operation is uh, whether using this information to be the output. So the cell information will be outputted as uh, the, uh, the becomes the hidden state and so on. And to realize this will be, we use the, uh, uh, the very cool idea which is a gating. So gating is actually just combining sigmoid information here. But sigmoid information has a zero and one information, right? And then if zero happens, it will not happen. One happens, this one will happen. So this will be uncertain, probabilistic, uh, the part of whether we forget store or uh, make it as an output. This information is controlled by this other uh, gating function. And all of this other uh, function, we can actually delight it as a neural network operation. And I will uh, go to the rest of the, my talk, uh, the, the, the part in the next uh, the lecture. Uh, any questions? <laughs>